Hello and welcome back to the Wrexham Way. Hope you're doing well and looking forward to today's transfer special as we start a brand new season here at Wrexham, our second in the Premier League after we just about survived last season, which is good. Hopefully we can buy some players this season, uh, really improve the team and try and do better than the 16th place finish that we recorded in the end of last season. So I think today could be a long one because uh, I've got the post-it notes out again with everything that I want to get done in today's stream and well I think there's nine players that ideally we need to be signing. So strap yourselves in, make sure you drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you're new around here and leave a comment down below for the YouTube algorithm because today we are going to be doing lots of transfers. Now there is good news and there is bad news to start off today's transfer special and I think we'll start off with the good news. The good news is the budgets. The budgets came in after last episode and they've decided to give us nearly £600,000 per week in wages which is nearly £200,000 more than last season which is fantastic and then they're also giving us £44 million to spend too so hopefully this is going to go an awful long way. We also asked for a new stadium in the last few episodes. They said no to that but the board have come back in between and said they're going to expand the stadium by uh, an extra 3,450 seats, taking the capacity to 12,802, which is still tiny. I'd still love a new stadium, but at least it's more seats, which is very good, and hopefully will be completed very, very soon as well. The board also asked me to do a meeting about increasing the club's youth level, which, of course, I said yes to. So we're now going from a Category 2 youth team thing to Category 1, which I presume is very good. So all of that is really, really good news, isn't it? Um, hmm... There's one bit of bad news, and it's quite a big bit of bad news. Miguel Augusto Herrera, he is one of the best players that we have. In fact, he is the best player we have at the team on paper. Very, very good. Colombian wonder kid who won the Next Gen Awards. He was really, really, you know, on paper a solid player. The issue is winning the Next Gen Awards has gone to his head, and he came to me and said he needs to move to a bigger club. And, I mean, I tried to fight it, hence why he's unhappy, as you can see, but... He does have a release fee clause in his contract, which was locked in there when we signed him last season. So, as you can probably see on the screen right now, uh, he's already going to be joining Wolfsburg for £16 because that's his release fee clause that he locked in last season, which is frustrating. However, I think it's not as bad as it seems. First of all, we bought him for £1.2 million. We've more than 10x our money on this, which is absolutely fantastic. So, that's a really good investment from us to get money into the club. Two, yes, he's maybe the best player on paper at the club, but last season, 34 games, two goals, two assists, 6.72 average rating, like, nothing special at all. Like, it's not like we're losing a 20-goal-a-season striker or something like that. I don't think losing him is going to be massively detrimental to us at all, so I'm not too upset about losing him, other than the fact he is a wonder kid and he is, you know, winning the next-gen awards and stuff like that. And I feel like we could have got a lot more money for him if we didn't have that release fee clause in there, but still. We'll take the 10x return on investment. It's a good deal. And so what that means is it is changing a little bit of my plans for next season. Because obviously we now have to get rid of him from the next season plan list on here. If I can actually get rid of him on my team sheet, please. Can we get rid of him, please? Herrera? Gone. There we go. So as you can see, I filled out the team and the bench with players that I think could do a job for us next season. But... There are nine players that I think we need to be signing for the club. Obviously, in the team, you can see we need a new goalkeeper. That's desperate. We need a new centre-back. I think that's pretty desperate. We now need a new centre-mid. And we could do with a left winger. Because I do think that Neil Long and Ewan are not quite up to Premier League scratch just yet. So just to help them, we probably do need another left winger coming into the team. So there's four players just there in the first team that we need to sign. But if we scroll down to our backup players... I think we could be doing with another new backup right back. Uh, we definitely need two new centre mids as well. So three centre mids coming in today in today's stream. Uh, a backup CDM as well. So the whole basically middle of the pitch needs a whole new look to it. And of course, we could be doing with a backup right back as well. That's a backup right winger. Sorry, that's what I'm thinking. So nine new players hopefully joining the team. That obviously leaves a lot of players down here with what do we do with them? I don't quite know. We're going to have to work it out at some point. And I say work out at some point. I've already worked it out. I've got a list of things that I want to do on the bottom of this. So there's four players that I think need to go out on loan. Breke, Jacobson, Long and probably Adam Thomas Parry I think could all be going out on loan this season. They're the four that I think I want to keep at the club for the more long term and they're not going to get much football this season. They need to go on loan. For me, Alec, Corialton, Statura, Lorca, Pizarro, Escobar and actually maybe Hikaru as well. 
I think all need to leave the club on a permanent deal. I just, for me, don't think they're going to make that much of an impact. A few players here you might think, oh, Tom, that's a bit weird, particularly Lorca and Pizarro. But Lorca has never really played for us massively. He's never really developed massively either. Yes, he's got plenty of potential, but at 21 years old, I don't think he's really going to reach it. And you can see from his games that he's played for us. Never done particularly well, sadly, for him. Pizarro is maybe the weirdest one out of all of this. On paper, a really solid player. And maybe, you know, I'm not entirely sure if we should sell him or not. But if we look at what he did last season, it was pretty atrocious. And his year in the championship wasn't even that good either, to be fair. So, I don't know. I don't think we'd miss him. And then Carlos Escobar, I love him to pieces, right? But, I mean, it's just, I think it's time for him to move on. Because he's never going to become that Premier League player that we need or want him to be. And then I'm kind of stuck on Paul. I don't know what to do with Paul, really. His contract's about to run out. Um, I, I, feel like, I feel like letting him go is probably the best thing, really. 22 years old, apparently just League One current ability, decent Premier League for the future, but he's 22. He's not going to get there, I don't think. Had a good season in the Championship, but I don't know. Didn't really adapt to the Premier League that much, I suppose. So he's probably going to leave on a free transfer, I think. And then Bradley Fink's an interesting one because he's currently on loan at Portsmouth. We sent him out in January, and I can't actually remember if I mentioned that on an episode or not, but he's been at Portsmouth since January and got seven goals in 15 games and actually done pretty well for himself. The thing is, he's got another year in his contract. It's either sell him, which is probably the likely thing to do, or keep him around in the team. It kind of depends how today's episode goes, I think. So, a lot of explaining to do there, but hopefully you kind of get the gist of what we are planning to do in today's episode. It's going to be an awfully long episode to get all of this done. Luckily for us, things are already happening because Lorca has got a bid on the table from two teams, actually. Uh, Cincinnati and Rotherham. Cincinnati offering considerably more money than Rotherham are. And if we can just boost this up, he's valued at 2.5 to 4.7 million. He actually has a release fee clause of 4.7 million. And I don't think Cincinnati are going to uh, trigger that at all. So if we can get three and a half million for him, it's a return on investment as well, more than we've sold him for. They say yes. If we can offer the ultimatum to Rotherham, see what they say about that. And hopefully they come back and offer that too. But we are starting early. We are currently on the 30th of May right now. So not even into June. The transfer window opens on the 9th of June. So I just wanted to get started early on players and things like that. Because there are players that will make bids for before the window opens, before other clubs start to make bids. Rotherham actually have matched the bid for Lorca as well, which is great, so we will accept it. Now, of course, I already have some targets identified for players that I want to bring into the club. There's a few here that uh, I think would be pretty decent. We're going to start at the back, though, and I think the first player that I want to sign is Lucas Schneller, who is a goalkeeper from Bayern Munich. We've scouted them out quite extensively so far, and to me... I think he's the best option to come into the club. Currently, like the backup player at Bayern Munich, uh, very, very cheap in terms of a uh, transfer fee, but his contract is a little bit expensive. He's got a year left on his deal. He's going to want a big contract with us, I think. But just to prove that we do need him, if we compare him with Andre Ucci, you can see that in almost every single area, he is better than Andre Ucci, which is great. Now, obviously, eccentricity, the lower it is, the better, basically. That's how I see it in goalkeepers. So it's not great that he's got 18 eccentricity, but everything else is as good or better, apart from in the air, apparently, where Gaston is slightly better. But for me, the overall better keeper probably a good idea to bring him in and he's currently transfer listed at 2.4 million pounds as well so this is not going to take a big chunk of our budget away either so let's make the offer for him at 2.4 million now we only need one center back coming into the club in my opinion but i've got three guys here on the shortlist as to who i could be looking to bring in my first choice would be this guy from mets a six foot two center back uh no caps for Argentina just yet, but I'm sure we'll get them at some point. On loan from Brentford at Mets right now. For me, looks like a pretty decent player all around. I mean, his heading could be a little bit better, but tackling and marking are pretty high, to be fair. Jumping reach is pretty decent too. Uh, not too shabby on the pace, and his mentals, for the most part, are pretty decent. If we compare him with our best centre-back, uh, Willy Camboala, there's not a whole lot in it, I'll be honest with you. There's not a whole lot in it, if I can find Camboala on here somewhere. There he is down there. But I think we can see that this guy, Diego, is ever so slightly better. Speed and physicality, Camboala has him, but defending, mentals, technicals, vision, he's got him. Apart from in the air. But it's okay, it's a difficult one. But I think we need to bring him in, particularly because he has got a, a, a both feet, actually, but particularly a left foot, which is great. So... I think he'd be a great player to bring to the team. Also, just had a very good season with Mets as well in uh, Ligue 2. So, obviously not quite 
the heights of uh, top division football, but still a good season nonetheless. Issue is he will be expensive, 12 to 14 million. In fact, can we just ask the agent to see if that's any cheaper or anything like that? No, they say 12 to 14 million pounds still. <laughs> so we're going to bring it all the way down uh, to 6 million and just press suggest. They want nine and then eight down the line, which is a lot of money. How about 10 up front? And then, I know, in fact, how about seven up front, five down the line? And that makes 12 million, right? They should be happy with that. Suggest, and they come back and say after 50 league games, 2.4 million, which makes it 14.5-ish. Bring it down to 1 million for 13 million pounds total. They agree. Now, if that one suddenly doesn't work out for some reason, uh, this Francisco Flores guy could also be coming in. However, he is obviously slightly better at heading, but everywhere else I'm not quite as convinced. If you just compare the two of them right now, you can see they are so, so similar. So, so similar actually. But for me, Diego is the slightly better one because he's younger and has still got a little bit of room to grow and has a solid left foot, whereas Flores doesn't. But I'd be happy bringing either one of these two but I would be happy bringing either one of them into the club. I just think Diego is probably the better option right now. The third centre-back, though, is this guy, Alejandro Cazorla. He is currently playing for Barcelona, 18 years old. We're not going to sign him. We're not going to sign him on a permanent deal. But what I think we might be able to do, not quite yet maybe, or maybe we can do right now, is get him on loan. The issue is they want a million pounds a month. And I'm not prepared to pay 12 million pounds for him this season. Uh, so that's actually off the table completely. Moving slightly further forwards, uh, this guy, Taha. He is the CDM that we tried to bring in last January who decided that he didn't want to join us and then when he did want to join us was on an awful lot of money and we did not want to pay that sort of money. I think the wage is still going to be really, really expensive. But right now, we can afford to try and just put an offer in and then walk away if he doesn't want to join us. We can come back in later on for him. But I do think he would be the best CDM to bring into the club, particularly on a free transfer. Has recently just broken into the Turkish national team as well. Look at his milestones. He did that in March this past year. So he's just got into the Turkish national team, which is fantastic, scoring a goal in the process. That might make his contract a little bit more expensive. But if we can get him down as a regular starter, important player is what he's gone orange on already. Okay, important player is fine. Not on 58 grand a week, though. Because that's about 10% of our entire wage bill. We can't be... That's, oh, that's unsustainable, really, if I'm honest with you. Like, we could go to 40, maybe, at the most, if I'm honest with you. Like, we could maybe start to spend that sort of money. If we just boost everything else up a little bit, let's down, drop it down to 30. Put the agent fee as high as it will go. We'll have to leave in the release fee clause. They're pretty high anyway, so I don't mind that. Sell on percentage fee. We'll have to leave it in there, I think, to try and keep him happy. The wage is the biggest issue right now. If we can get it down as close to 30 as possible, that would be great. We're not going to keep many clean sheets, so I'm happy to have that in there, to be fair. A new substitute fee will start most games, so I don't mind. The appearance fee could be brought down a little bit, I must say. If we can get these down to like 7.5, maybe. Right. Let's see how angry he is at this. Quite angry. Uh, he's already gone back to 55 onto orange and again I think this might not work out right now but as you know the transfer window goes on and he doesn't get to join a club I think we could be onto something with this guy maybe just offer him 40 that's as high as I really want to go and he walks away okay that's fine moving further forward though into the center of midfield there's a few players that i do want to sign and this guy is the first guy this uh, 25 year old uruguayan uh, santiago cartagena he is currently at chelsea on loan at young boys in switzerland but the interesting thing about him is that he's had a very good season with young boys i must say a really really good season the interesting thing is that chelsea are going to let him go for free like, he's got a contract still, I believe. Uh, oh no, his contract's about to run out. No, that's at Young Boys. His contract is about to, oh, run out at Chelsea. Okay, well, that's why they're so keen to let him go on a free. I was a bit confused by that. I thought it was just his loan deal. Okay, so actually, we can just approach to sign this guy. And I think he would be a pretty decent addition to the team in the centre of midfield. He wants to play as a Mazala. Let's get rid of that because I don't think we're going to use a Mazala so much this season. Uh, wants to improve the coaching team. And midfield. We can get rid of coaching team, but we can definitely do the midfielder one, I think. 
fingers crossed, uh, suggests that promise to him and he's happy. Okay, negotiate the contract, 51 grand a week. Again, it's another big one. It's slightly less than 10% of our wage bill, but again, I don't really want to pay him 51 grand a week for five years. If we can just sort of bring a lot of this down, that would be great. But this might be another one. I mean, 20 grand a week appearance fee. God, these guys are made of money, aren't they? Okay, 35. That feels more reasonable. Gosh, it's the appearance fee that's going to kill us at some point, though. Like 15, let's leave it at that, maybe. I don't think he's going to agree to any of this on a four-year deal. He's nowhere near. Okay, it's another player that I think we wait on. Just because I don't want to give two players 20% of our whole wage budget. And it's fine anyway, because this guy, Adrian Molinas, currently playing at Arsenal, I think is maybe a better player to bring in anyway. Fingers crossed. We need three centimetres anyway, so it's going to be quite difficult. Uh, this guy, currently playing at Arsenal, has not really played much for them since joining from uh, Gymnasia, who actually we bought uh, Sione from, didn't we? Which is quite interesting. So there's that link there between those two players. We'll see how he does. We'll see how he does. He should be available pretty cheap uh, between 1.3 and 8.6 million. That's quite the range, isn't it? Uh, let's put 2.5 million down on the table. They want 3.4 and then 3.1 down the line. Let's get rid of the future thing. Let's go 2.5 and 2.5 for 5 million pounds total. And they want 1 million pounds after 50 league games for 6 million. It's within the budgets. Okay, we'll accept the demands on that one. And that's a bid that's been made. And then we're also talking about the left wing debacle issue, maybe, potentially. Now, the left winger that I want to bring in is this guy called Kevin Bell. 21 years old, Scottish, uh, plays on the left-hand side, is really good, great at free kicks, uh, a little bit slow, maybe, and his finishing's not ideal, and he's only got a left foot. So it has to be a winger, not an inverted winger on the left-hand side. But it's fine because he's just sort of there to play until our youngsters are better. But you guys in the comments do make a good option for me. Spadina, our left back, uh, is a very good player and theoretically could actually play on the wing very, very well. Plays with both feet, could be that inverted winger. He, he's there, you know, he's there. It's not a bad option to have, particularly when you realise that in the left back role, his tackling is only six, which is not ideal. His marking's only eight. He's not that great defensively, really. So there is the option to maybe convert him to a winger. The issue is he's not quite yet Premier League capable in all areas. Like we're playing him because we want him to be and he will be in the future. But if we want to be doing better this season, we probably need someone better playing in both left back and left wing, if I'm honest with you. So I'd maybe rather keep him at left back right now, I think. But it does depend because this Kevin Bell guy is available pretty cheap, I must say. And would be very, very good for us and has had a good season at Hibs. So we're going to see what sort of money they want for him. I think 5 million seems reasonable uh, and they want 8 million and a bit. Uh, let's bring this down to 5 and five and 1, like 6 million pounds total. They've locked in profit from next sale though. Uh, can we just bring it down to 30%? Would they accept that? If we bring, ooh, if we bring it down to like 4, 1.5... Would they accept that? No, they won't. Uh, so let's cancel it, come back in tomorrow, get rid of that and try and go again. The other option is to move Spadina to right wing, uh, left wing, sorry, and then bring Aaron Hickey in to play at left back. A play that we've looked at before and a play who is much more defensively solid. The issue is in the past, he has been like ridiculously expensive in terms of contracts and things like that. And I don't think that's going to change much at all but has had a decent couple of seasons with Cagliari and Napoli, actually, as well, by looks of things. So it would have to depend on how much we pay for him. £8 million? They feel they can get more. £9 million then. And that, so far, is where we are. Now, Brentford have accepted the bid for the centre-back, Diego... I can't say his net surname. Sequira? Sequira? D Diego, for now. I think we bring him in. 31 to 43,000 pounds a week. We're going to have to start spending more on players. We knew that definitely. It's a bit frustrating that it is maybe this much. If we say regular starter, he's happy with that. Well, that reduces wage demand a little bit. It does. I reckon we can get him into the mid-20s on that. 
Let's bring it down as low as possible right now for us. Uh, release fee clauses are in there. I think I'm happy to leave them in there on the grounds that both of them are more than what we're paying for him right now. And it might just help get his contract demands down a little bit. So I don't mind too much, particularly because I don't think he's going to be the world-beating centre-back wonder kid. So that's fine. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Bring that down. Bring that down. Suggest he's not going to like it. And he's doubled the wage that we offered him to 44. If we can go 28. Leave those as they are. 35. Okay, that's good. We can get him on, We can get him to 28 and a half. We can get him to 28 and a half. We can get him to 30. We can get him to 30. Okay. Done. Also, the bid for the sentiment from Arsenal has also been accepted, but he's more interested in joining Bournemouth and Palace. So we need to get this right now, and we need to get this right quickly. Want to be in the centre mid with a role of centre midfielder. That's absolutely fine because that's exactly what it's going to do. Squad regular important. That's fine by me. Negotiate all of this. He's on 31 right now. That's what he wants. A release fee clause, which I don't think will be met by clubs in the Champions League. I don't think we're that interested in him. So we'll leave it there. They're both ex more expensive than what we're paying for him right now. So I don't mind leaving them in if it means the contract is cheaper. Let's bring it down to 25 grand a week. Six and a half, four and a half. A new substitute fee. Oh, we have to leave it in there, I think, can't we? Suggest he's happy, interestingly. Okay. Another contract, hopefully sorted. I've also slowly started to offer players out to clubs. Uh, Statura is valued between, I think it's like 250 and £600,000. Pounds, and MLS clubs are bidding half a million pounds for him. So I think we will accept uh, the half a million pound bids from uh, the clubs that offered it and reject Nashville. Escobar also getting offers on the table for him. He's valued between 10 and 12 million, which I think is massively overvalued, if I'm honest with you. But there are clubs willing to spend up to five million pounds on him. And I think we might accept this one because we bought him for free. So let's make some money. Let's maybe get rid of the Carl's Rule and Elche one because, I, in fact, we'll accept the one from uh, John Book. And then we will offer an ultimatum to the other clubs and see if they accept. As for other clubs, uh, as for other players, they are not wanted. No one wants to buy Alec for £5 million. So I think I might even just slash that to £3 million and just see if anyone wants to put a bid on the table for him. But again, it might be better to wait until the transfer window opens for players like him. Uh, Pizarro, transfer offered to clubs. No one wants him for £10 million, so 7.5 might be the option, but we'll keep bringing it down a little bit. Cagliari are now coming back saying they want 9.25 plus 1.8 to basically take it to like £11 million. Let's get rid of that. Uh, bring this down to 1 and 9. Suggest, and they now want... They want their £11 million, basically, don't they? They want their £11 million. Um, well, let's get rid of that 90k. That's 900k over 10 games, that is. That's a lot of money. Get rid of that. After 10 international games, 1 million. 11 million, you can have that. And they... Right, can we just do that? No, they, they, they're desperate. That's what they want. Right, accept it. In the meantime, the Bayern Munich keeper has come back as well and wants 40 to 50 grand a week. I was not expecting wage demands to be quite this high, if I'm honest with you. Um, first choice keeper, then it is. And he wants... Mm, us to suggest a thing for him 30 grand a week okay that's that's gonna be low as well that's gonna be low let's just suggest it and see how much he hates it uh not that much actually if we can get him into the low 30s like 32 and a half million pound signing on fee yeah let's bring it down to 7.5 suggest again he's the wage is the biggest thing. 32 and a half. He's not happy, but we're going to get him down to 32 and a half. We are. I promise you. We are. And now the bid for Hickey has been accepted. But again, he's got more interest in joining Newcastle, Bournemouth. Oh, actually, they're no, the same interest in Bournemouth and Cardiff as us, but more in Newcastle because they are very rich, of course. And again, these wage demands are going to be a bit too much for us, I think. Uh, regular starters, fine. Like, we can we can deal with that. Stepping stone, that's fine as well, because I don't think it's going to want to buy them in the future. Um, but again, 45 grand a week is a lot. Let's bring it down. 
to 30, which you won't like. Everything else to stay the same, including release fee clause, which are being locked in there. Suggest he doesn't like it at all. We kind of knew that anyway. 32 and a half is not going to happen. 34 might happen. 34, I think other clubs are going to get him, even if he accepts this contract. It's a big contract, but it would allow us to move Spadina further forward whilst also learning from Aaron Hickey as well, who's obviously very good. Hold on a second, I've just seen something in the news as well. Robert Lewandowski is still playing. He's 39 years old, he's just out into retirement apparently, but he's still playing football at PSG. Also getting quite concerned that clubs are bidding for players that we want, like Adrian Molinas, like Aaron Hickey. Hmm. Feels like this might turn into a bit of a waiting game as uh, we wait for players to sign for us. Actually, the first one is here. The centre-back coming in from Brighton. £12 million for Diego Sequeira, which I'm going to try and pronounce properly at some point. But he's the first choice centre-back that we wanted. Looks like it's working out quite nicely. Okay. Okay. We'll accept it. And he will arrive on the 9th of June, so in a week's time or so. But one player is leaving the club. Lorca is off. He is going to sign for Rotherham instead for £3.5 million, which is pretty decent money. So thank you, Lorca, for your service. You weren't that good for us. Hopefully you have a great time at Rotherham. Ah, annoyingly, uh, Molinas is going to join Crystal Palace and not us. Kind of understandable, I suppose. They are a better team than us right now. So he's off there, but we do need three centre mids. So that is really frustrating for us. In good news, though, uh, the goalkeeper Schneller, he is going to sign for us. So we'll accept that and get him joined up to the club tomorrow, which is fantastic. Stachura is now leaving the club as well to go to Toronto. So all movement right now. Into Milan have decided they want to sign Paul. Um, well, his contract expires in a few days' time. Um, I mean, we could just... We could be very cheeky and just say, if you want him, two and a half mil. Because if we could just, because I doubt he's going to want to sign a contract if Inter Milan are interested in him, basically. Um, I mean, I'm not that interested in him either, if I'm honest with you. It's why I was thinking about letting him go. He's not really developed to the player we want him to be. In the meantime, though, of course, here we go. Two players join the club, which is fantastic. So here's Lucas Schneller, uh, bought for £2.5 million, pounds, already valued at 10 to 14 which is fantastic. Obviously, on a lot of money per week, but that's absolutely fine. And also, a very good tutor, I would imagine, for our younger keepers, which is quite nice. Uh, Diego Sequeira also coming into the club as well. Got good work rate, uh, good everything, basically. He will be coming in to be our left centre-back, and I am quite happy with this signing. Also, no one put two and a half million pounds on the table for Paul, but clubs are offering contracts to him for free now. So, uh, <laughs> didn't quite work out the way he wanted it to. And Hickey has gone to Newcastle on a, a massive contract compared to us. So, that makes a lot of sense. I think we wait two weeks or three weeks, however long it is, go back in for the guy from Hibs for the left wing. Also, Carlos Escobar leaving the club for five million pounds. That's a good return on investment. Thank you for everything, Carlos. We love you. Have a great time in Japan, or is it Korea? He's playing in, um, which one is this? South Korea. Have a good time. So three gone, two in, and that's all the deals on the table right now. Let's go back in for some more. Ha, now I've just been alerted to Paolo Bernardo. Now we don't know much about him, but I've had him in plenty of other saves in the past, and I know that he is a good player. And he's had a pretty decent two seasons with Maritimo in Portugal. Loads of goals and assists and goal contributions, actually. Okay. I'm tempted. Uh, transfer status, 9.8 to 12 million pounds to make it possible. It's a lot. It's a lot. I think it'd be worth it though. I think it'd be worth it. 5 million now. And let's see if we can get 5 million down the line and then get rid of profit from next sale. And they want just an extra bit more if we can make that 4.5 and 4.5 with that 2 million there, that's all right to me. I've also got quite a big shortlist as well of, well, I've also got a shortlist of players that I'm trying to keep tabs on at the moment as well. So maybe not quite players that I'm desperate to sign right now, but they could be signed in the future at some point. Uh, if we get rid of the interesting transfer bit, there's actually a lot of players on this list that I want to keep tabs on. Uh, most of them are very, very good, as you can tell. If we make this doubtful, 
18 players interested in signing for us. Now, this guy, Milan Milenkovic, is currently Serbian, playing for Red Star, centre mid on attack. Potentially one for the future. Loads of under-21 caps for Serbia. Actually does remind me a little bit. He does remind me a little bit of Herrera. Like, if we compare the two of them, Herrera is the better player, obviously. But, attributes. Compare midfield roles as a centre midfielder on attack. Where it's important... They're pretty similar, like techniques the same, passing's the same, first touch is actually better for Milan. It's the mentals that let him down a little bit, but his mentals are still pretty good, it's just Miguel's are so, so... This guy looks actually pretty similar moulded to Herrera. And he's only valued at three and a half million pounds. Is that his release fee clause or something? Discuss it with his agents, 3.5 million release fee clause, okay. I'll, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it make the offer and so we've got an accepted bid on the table for Paolo Bernardo but it is expensive in the contract department again regular starter he likes that okay that might bring the contract demands down to 46,000 pounds a week right hmm 32 and a half is probably not going to be enough is it suggest oh, he's, ooh, it's not going to work out is it it's not going to work out like, I don't really want to spend much more than £35,000 a week on a player. Um, and we're just going to get nowhere on this, are we? We're going to get nowhere, Paolo. Uh, or maybe we are. <laughs> maybe we are. It would make him the highest earner at the club. Um, and on a big appearance fee as well. But we're going to need that step up, aren't we? And if it doesn't work out, basically what we can do is just like amortise these two transfers to say actually we've not paid nine million pounds and 35 grand a week for Paolo Bernardo if we include this one in there three and a half plus nine is twelve and a half okay it's six million pounds each then and then the contract of this guy is way less as well so that makes me think that yeah if we, if we combine the two of them it's a good deal that's how I get over it in my head it's definitely how I get over it in my head again let's try and get one as cheap a contract as possible to help us out on as long as possible as well Suggests hmm. Also, I've been putting some more stuff out for players and Hall wants to buy Hikaro for two point what one point two million pounds, sorry. I think we accept it. He's not going to become a Premier League player. We, we get rid of him for that sort of money. Hull, take him off our hands, please. Uh, bids are being made for Pizarro, but they are absolutely terrible, aside from the one from Inter Milan of 4.6 million. So I will go through and reject all of them, aside from Inter Milan. He's valued at 11. He's, he's valued at 11, but that's not 11 million pounds worth of value there. And we are going to get a lot of profit on him. I'm, I'm going to accept it. I just want him gone. I want, to, I want to get him gone and get the money in. Oh, and more failings, more failings. Paolo Bernardo's gone to Southampton instead of us. Turns out it's pretty difficult to uh, sign players, actually. That's not so good, but it's easy to sell players, though. Hikaru is leaving the club to join Hull City for £1.2 million, which is quite good, actually. His contract is expiring in literally like two weeks' time. So it's uh, good we've got money for him as opposed to letting him go on a free. So thank you for the money, Hull. And also... This is the weird one for me. Now, maybe for a Barnsley fan, I know there are some watching that, uh, you know, this makes a lot of sense, but Inter, Atalanta, Napoli, Bologna turns them all down for Barnsley. That also does force our hand a little bit to really step up a look for a right back, of whom we aren't getting too many reports on right now. But a player that we actually could maybe look to bring in is Sandri. Just seen him on these scout reports. Now, I've had him in previous saves. He does get pretty good. And I think he would be quite handy to bring into the team. He looks pretty good from what we can see right now. And if we just do a quick comparison with, for example, Herrera, you can actually see that there's not too much difference between them. For 8.4 million, potentially, is that what the uh, the transfer status is? 8.4 million release fee clause, okay. Still, expensive contract of thirty-seven to forty-seven thousand pounds a week. Let's make the offer of eight point two five million. Then let's make that. Get it triggered. Hopefully, offer him a nice contract. But this is not looking good. Uh, regular starters fine. 
Centre mid is fine. Finalised promise, negotiate contract. 50 grand a week. 35, can we do that for you on a four-year deal? 50, oh, he's not happy. I don't think he's going to budge, is he? I don't think he's going to budge much from that, or he might. I mean, 37 and a half is a lot. It feels stupid. It feels stupid. Also, we're kind of like around the 20th, 21st of uh, June nearly as uh, Pizarro is about to go to Inter Milan for 4.6 million. It's a bit less than we would have wanted for him, but I just wanted to get him gone. Particularly when we know we're going to be spending an awful lot of money on players. So Pizarro is gone. But the point I was trying to make is that we are like three weeks or so since we offer contracts to players like Taha. And I think now... Uh, okay, he's still not quite happy to talk to us, but surely in the next couple of days or so, he should be happy to talk to us. I think it's usually three weeks in between um, contract talks, basically. If they turn you down, you have to wait three weeks. Just got to wait for a work permit on Sandry, but it looks like that one is going to be pretty positive for us. We're now on the 21st of June. That makes you think it's been three weeks talking to us. He wants to talk to us now. Good, okay. Um, well, let's get rid of that CDM role and let's just put him regular starter. Let's start him off on the bad foot by going important player. Okay, that's what he wants. Still wants that 50 grand a week, but now that we are pushing up prices for other players a little bit, maybe we can start to think about the sort of 35k range, which before was not really part of what I wanted. <sighs> Again, we are kind of desperate to bring some players in. Uh, so I might just have to be accepting of the unused substitute fee. And everything else. Get that off, maybe. How cross is he going to be? Not too cross. He wants more money. 37 and a half. Let's just bump the signing on fee up a little bit. 46 and a half. Right, we can get there. We can get there. 37 again. He says 41. Uh, 38 and a half. No, 39. 39. <sighs> It's so much money, but we've got our man. This guy does look good to me. Like, everything we're going to need in a ball winner and an anchor. Like, a really good play. It does say injury prone. I've noticed that as well. But if we look at his past injuries, he does have, like, quite a few. But they're no more than five weeks. And, I, and we can deal with that. Oh, I don't like how I'm spending all this money on wages. I really don't like it at all. But he will be worth it. He's just got into the Turkish national team, hasn't he? He's playing well. It's a free transfer. It's it's free, which is great for us. Bournemouth, by the way, out of nowhere, £23 million for Paul Dillon, uh, which is actually underneath what he's valued at. So he's got no interest in joining Bournemouth, which is fine. So let's reject it and potentially actually offer Paul Dillon a new contract, who has done really well in recent weeks or so. If only his crossing and dribbling were better. In fact, if only a lot of him was better, he's actually not that good technically. In terms of technical ability, is not that good. If we can get him on a new contract as a regular starter on 32 grand a week, that's where it lets me down a little bit. I don't want to give him 32 grand a week. <laughs> 20. How about that? And then suggest. And he just, we're not going to get anywhere, are we, Paul Dillon? 21 is what I'll give you. This is the new normal now for us, I'm afraid. This is the new normal. And I don't like it. Oh no, Southampton also offering Taha a contract as well. And they'll offer more, won't they? They'll offer more money than us. He's been on our books for so long. We've tried to sign him for so long. As soon as we, see, we, we get a contract in for him, Southampton's straight in there. At least Sandry's here for 8.25 million. That's something, but... Oh, that's really grinded my gears. So welcome to the team Sandry. Welcome to the team Sandry, who uh, has only got three-star current ability, but given that if we compare him again, once again, with uh, Herrera, who is technically he's replacing, like Herrera is probably the slightly better player, but not by much. So I feel like the difference in stars is a bit harsh there. And now Lucas Holter wants to discuss an improved contract, which we can't afford. We actually can't. Um, even want to, the club can't afford it right now. And he's, he's crossed with me about that. He's seen new players joining the team on some big contract. He's on 20 grand a week himself, to be fair. Um, he's disappointed in me. He's going to consider his options. R great. Thanks a lot, mate. Making my life less stressful. But at least Paul Dillon has signed his new contract at the club, which is, uh, I, mean, I mean, good. It means we should be able to get more money for him down the line, I imagine. But 
um, it's quite expensive. Also, tons of loan players are about to come back as well. Uh, we'll have to sort this all out at some point as well, but probably not on camera because I think there's going to be too much to do on camera and it's going to be a very long episode if we do all that on camera too. The one player that I actually really, really wanted to sign. Really, really wanted to sign this guy. That's another player Southampton have picked up from us this season. That's... Oh. I hate Southampton. Well, there is another option in Amadou Onana. The thing is, I don't think he actually wants to sign for us. No, he doesn't. Because he's just signed a new contract with Stanley Age. That's why. So he would be normally, but he's just signed a new contract with them. Uh, literally about a month ago. Okay. Just searching for CDMs, though. Uh, there's a guy here, 21 years old, currently playing for San Lorenzo in Argentina. Now, apparently he's a right back and a CDM. We don't know much about him right now. Uh, other than he's got six under 21 caps for Argentina. Um, his tackling's quite good. Anticipation's quite good. Like, he actually, I think he would be a pretty decent CDM. But it also might just kill two birds with one stone if we get a CDM and a right back in. Again, this is going to be quite blind, this one, I think. Uh, but he's interested in signing for us. It's a bit of a panic. Uh, let's put two million on the table and then get rid of profit from next sale. Uh, suggest... They want a bit more. Two and a half then. <laughs> Is that the way we save the team? Is that the way we save that? Just hope that this 21-year-old Argentine kid who might be a right back, might be a CDM, might just work for us. Uh, and they actually come back and say they want £4.1 million, which is release fee clause, which is uh, fair enough. We'll accept it, get the release fee clause triggered, and the contract is... It's interested in Tottenham. Oh, Tottenham, please don't bid. It means it's good, though, if Tottenham want him. Surely, that's, that's my logic at least. There's now... He wants to play as a CDM, but not, I, we won't play him as a ball winner though, so I'm going to get rid of that. He wants to improve the midfield, which we will do, and we can give him everything else. Commit you a regular starter though. Oh, important player, finalise, okay, that's fine. Uh, he wants 33, we can, we can get that down to 22 and a half, can't we? And then, he's locked in release fee clauses, let's just push them up as high as they'll go then, and lock them in. Get rid of that, kind of just keep it as it is. It's the wage that's the big one right now, isn't it? 23 and a half, 23 and a half again. Yes, finalized, good. Right, I think it's time for a bite of the cherry on a couple of these other players. Um, let's start off with Milan Milenkovic again. I think it's time that he is happy to sign contract with us. So again, work permits could be an issue with him too, but three and a half million pounds, let's offer it up. Uh, Kevin Bell on the left wing it's probably the best option for us the same deal as last time which they don't like why don't you like it What 4.1 million pounds then you might like that because usually that seems to work I think although Milenkovic is still not happy to talk to us apparently which probably means that Bell is also still not happy to talk to us um, I thought it had been three weeks I thought we got to talk to them on the 9th so it's been like 21 days since then should be in the next few days or so, like Milenkovic will be happy to talk to us. Like, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I, I, don't, think, I don't think there's anything I'm doing wrong, actually, if I'm honest with you. I just think we're just being very unlucky, potentially. Um, that's the main part, I think. We can't also sign this guy because he's got no work permit now as well. Not that we're going to sign him, but I just saw his name again and saw work permit and thought, what's that about? We can't sign him. Okay. Okay, I'm just looking at other players on my sort of keep tabs list. And I found this guy, Jan Patrick, who... Is as good as Galbraith, potentially a little bit better. Uh, Sentiment right wing back is a bit of a weird combination of positions, but you know, technique, work rates, teamwork is high. Off the, his mentals are pretty decent, to be fair. Technicals where they matter, apart from passing, which is probably quite important for a centre mid, uh, is not so good. But I am panicking here a little bit. How much would he be available for? Between eight point eight and ten point five, twenty five grand a week in wages, up to thirty four grand a week in wages. Can we get you down to like 5 million and add three installments of another 5 million for 10 million pounds total? I wouldn't say no to it, given how young he is. Oh, maybe we should have gone lower, but we'll finalise that deal. I was a chap here, uh, Sofian Arab. I do like the look of him as well. 18 years old, most importantly, would fail to get a work permit. Uh, well, Casablanca might be happy to let him go to us. He's played very well this past season for them. Ask agent about availability, 5.4 to 7 million transfer. I mean, 
it's just about making some mass bids right now, I think. But again, he's not going to get the work permit, is he? And that's what's frustrating. Three and a half now, three and a half million down the line. How does that sound for seven million pounds total? They want more. How about seven and a half million pounds total if we can get that sorted? Okay, deal done. And now contracts for both of them. So Jan Patrick first on 32 to 43,000 pounds a week. It's a lot of money. Uh, regular starter. He's happy with that. Wants 35 grand a week. Okay, let's bring it all the way down to 22 and a half and then start to try and build up from there a little bit. Um, just try and bring some of these things down, basically. It's, this is the most difficult transfer window I've ever had to do in Football Manager. Like, genuinely, it could be one of the most difficult. I don't like this at all. This guy keeps wanting more money. Apart from now, he's kind of agreed to that, which is good. The deal for Sofian Arab is also quite expensive contractually. Which is so frustrating, but this guy's got a lot of potential, so I don't mind paying. If we can get a, this guy a work permit, this would be amazing. I'd be happy with it. But I don't think he's going to get the work permit. And that's what's letting me down a little bit here. Again, if we can just get that down to 28 grand a week, happy. Okay, good. Not actually heard anything back from Hibs yet about that winger. Uh, have they rejected or they have rejected us um okay well four and a half two and a half one point five suggests they just say no why why are you not happy to sell him now let's cancel the offer then and then just you know i don't know i don't know what we do honestly i came into today's episode thinking this is going to be a lot of fun it's not a lot of fun this episode i'm stressed i mean after editing i don't know how long this is going to take uh, to get to this point, but we've only signed three players right now, and Adam Thomas Parry's coming to talk to me because apparently the team aren't happy about something. With my management of the team, right? What's going on here then? What's the matter? If you think about the dressing atmosphere, it's a real chore to come at work at the moment. I, I'm trying my best, lads. I'll promise to make it better. I don't know what I, had to, I don't have to do that. Um, and now they're unhappy about Andon Thomas Parry because he thinks he's going to get replaced because he's going to be sold on loan. Oh, for... I don't want to talk about this. This is just getting worse and worse and worse. Um, and I am, I am concerned. I am concerned. Also, Milan, do you want to talk to us now after all this? I mean, he's not going to get a work permit either, is he? That's the annoying part. He's not going to get one either. But he's happy to talk to us now. And we'll just give him exactly what he wants this time around rather than faff around like we did previously. Just give him exactly what he wants and... I'm sure, as he's not going to go back on loan, uh, he'll have a work permit rejected, won't he? Interestingly, uh, QPR making a bid for Bradley Fink. I might just accept it. We've got Roxfarg, we've got Sione. At this stage, we've still got Jacobson, who I wanted to get rid of on loan, but that's not going to happen because no one wants him, so he's still kicking around at the club. Oh, I'm going to accept it. Get out of here, Bradley Fink. Get out of here. As... Um, Work permit for Arab has been uh, rejected. Just cancel that one then. On to the next day where we'll get another work permit cancelled or not done. Probably, potentially, maybe. Let's have a look and see what is said on the 7th. Also, my players want new contracts, which I can't give them. Well, I can give them, but I'm not, I'm not going to give them the new contract because we can't afford to give everyone 50 grand a week contracts at the moment. But Jan Patrick is going to get a work permit do it just, just get it done five million pounds taken from 53 million pounds that we've got in the bank right now which is quite a lot of money considering we've sold quite a few players uh in he comes right intensive language course finally a player's here but annoyingly now josh timon out for three to four months or two to three with a specialist that's annoying how good is jan patrick if we're going to like compare him to center mids he is still second best because this guy's a centre-back. He's second best, apparently. Ahead of both Galbraith and Sandri, apparently. 
So he might actually end up starting ahead of Sandra on the left-hand side of the midfield then. Paul, oh, and more good news. Uh, the right-back slash CDM has had a work permit agreed as well. So he's also joining. Okay, good. That's that's handy. Now, let's work out what position he's actually best at. He is probably better as a CDM, I would say. Get him in his, oh, get him in an anchor. Yeah, that's kind of what we wanted him to be as well. So let's just get him training as a anchor, to be fair. That's good. That's handy. So that's another player coming in who can play multiple positions, to be fair. Although six players being called up to the Olympics, uh, including including three players for Argentina, uh, two for the Dutch and one for Denmark, is not ideal because the Olympics will overlap with the start of the season, will it not? Uh, likely. Likely to overlap with the start of the season. Camboala still wants a new contract as well. Uh, again, we can't afford to give it to you right now. And he's not happy about it. I'm not going to back down here. I can't talk about it. He's got to consider his options now. Just as we think we're getting a breakthrough, we're pulled back with international duty and Camboala being a money grabber, which is probably fair enough, to be fair. Also, interestingly, clubs want to buy Adam Thomas Parry offers who is now he's our club captain uh, won't be our club captain for much longer but is technically our sixth best centre back at the club it would make sense to let him go wouldn't it it would make sense to let him go oh, but he's been here for so long and he is actually pretty solid I do like him a lot what I don't like is the weekly wage contributions but that would only be for two years we can't negotiate these offers either I'm rejecting them I reckon we can get closer to 10 million pounds for him also back to the Kevin Bell situation right um we cancel it earlier. Can we cancel it again? I want to just get go to like a fresh slate with him. I don't want to have to like go through previous offers as well as Rotherham are offering ten million pounds to Adam Thomas Parry. I'll I'll accept it because ten million pounds is a lot of money. We'll take that for Adam Thomas Parry definitely. Uh, back to the shortlist. Back to Kevin Bell. Back to transfers. Back to make an offer. It's still like that. Suggest and they. Right, it's such a weird deal. I don't understand that at all. Okay, so it's been like uh, 24 hours since I last started recording. Um, okay, so it's been like 24 hours since I was last recording. Uh, I got tired and this, this transfer window has taken it out of me. It's long. Um, I saved it at a crucial point. This crucial point. Hibs have accepted the bid for Kevin Bell and we've got to talk contracts with him. Now, <laughs> this is all 24 hours ago for me in my head. Um, so I think we're still pretty certain on signing a left winger, aren't we? Um, to try and get things going nicely. Kevin Bell, he does look quite good to be fair and it also helps us develop some younger players um, to overtake him at some point in the future. So uh, we'll start negotiations with him to be an important player. Let's get rid of that. Can we make him a regular starter? He likes that, okay. Hopefully that will bring down his contract demand a little bit but we've got to put a contract up for him. It did say 34, Oh, actually, no, it says 23 to 33 grand a week. I assume he's going to be on the higher side of that. So let's just put 30 on the table, maybe. He's locked in a relegation release fee clause, which we'll leave as it is, because yeah, that kind of makes sense. Everything else will keep reasonable in there. Suggest, and he's already up to 40 grand a week. Okay, let's get this down then. So this estimated wage is a bit of a lie, isn't it? Uh, release fee clause, 40 million. We'll leave it in there. It's a lot of money and he's not meant to be our future, is he? So if someone wants to buy 40 million, that's fine by me. Landmark goal bonus is fine. Unused substitute fee is a bit high. So his goal bonus. Leave the appearance fee as it is. Bring this down to 30, 32 and a half. Hopefully he's not going to get too angry at that. He likes most of it. If we can just bring some of these bonuses down and again bring this down to 33. Happy deal. Okay. Okay. So I believe we're also waiting on the 12th for a work permit to come through for Milan Milenkovic, uh, which I don't think we're going to get. It'd be great if we could, 
but I don't think we are going to get it. And yeah, it's been rejected. I don't want to sign him without that, so we'll cancel it. But we still have £44 million. If we get, well, once we sign Bell, that'll go down to about 38. So there's still actually quite a lot of money to spend. Also, the squad think I need to give uh, Lucas Holter a new contract. <laughs> no, we don't. If everyone took a step back, you'd know he doesn't deserve a new contract. And uh, Paul Dillon's happy. Gaston Andriucci and Alec are not so happy. I don't mind about those guys too much. I think that's a good meeting. So we're still looking for another centre mid. Potentially, this guy could be it. Uh, Sofian Deby, which is a quite a cool name. I like that. Uh, French, really good technique, passing, and first touch. Um, his long shots aren't too bad either. He's meant to be a centre bin on attack, which is what we play. The only issue we have with him is his marking and tackling are absolutely atrocious. However, he is more advanced as a player. He's not really meant to be a marker or a tackler. Everything else I'm seeing is actually pretty decent, I must say. I quite like it. I know we're not quite fully there on his scouting, but I quite like it. If we just ask his agent about availability, we're looking at between 10 and 15 million for him. Okay. Okay. Well, can we bring it down to, let's start at maybe like seven, which they'll reject, obviously. They want eight and seven. Well, can we bring that down to like four and eight? For £12 million pounds total. Yes. Brilliant. Maybe paying a little bit too much for him there. It's quite a bit of money that. And actually that could be our record transfer. Um, which is quite a lot of money actually. That feels maybe not quite right. But for 21 years old. Lots of you know good current ability. I think he could be good. He's got less interest in joining Brentford. But Brentford are interested. Uh, so there's a contract on the table. Let's start negotiating with him. Want to play centre mid on centre mid. Yep, that's absolutely fine. Can we just make you a regular starter as an sort of important player? Yes, he likes that. 39 grand a week is a lot of money. Let's bring it down to 30 instead. We will leave in the release fee clauses. I know they're not great, but... If we get rid of them, the wage demands go way out of the, you know, way out of the stratosphere. And at that point, I'd be happy to sell him for £42 million as well, if we could get that sort of money for him. It's the appearance fee that's big. Goal bonus, bring it down a little bit. Let's see how much he hates it. He hates it quite a lot. The wage is the biggest one. 32 and a half. Let's see if we can just get this done. Uh, he's not going to budge much, is he here? Let's leave the bonuses as they are. If we can get the wage down to 32 and a half or 33. He likes that better. Okay. And so if those two players come in, look at my post-it notes here. Uh, we'd have the left winger and the centre mid. And it's just a right back and a right winger that we might want to look to bring in. So that's quite handy. We're getting there. We are getting there. It's taking its time. Uh, lots and oh, now oh, this could be a tricky one with Brentford, to be fair. Uh, but they might have their bid rejected, potentially. I mean, I hope they do. Luckily, though, Kevin Bell has quickly decided to sign for us. So he is coming in. Six and a half million pounds to be our starting winger this season. Also, a few players heading out on loan to other clubs. But for ten million pounds, Adam Thomas Parry about to leave the club to Rotherham. Fair play. I mean, he's been a great servant to us. But he's not quite developed as much as maybe wanted him to or thought he could do. He's good for the championship. In terms of Premier League stuff, I mean, he actually put a 7.02 average rating in last season, which was great. But in terms of actual ability, he's currently the sixth best centre-back we have. I mean, fourth best maybe if you, you get rid of Ostergaard and you get rid of Paul Dillon. But uh, I, think, I think it's time to let him go. £10 million is a nice bit of money. So in comes one player, Kevin Bell. Out goes out another player, Adam Thomas Parry. Uh, Bell looks really good though. Uh, three and a half stars of current ability, five star potential. Still 21 in the Scottish national setup. Will be a good player to chew to some younger players on the wing as well. I do quite like what we see here. Also, apparently that really helps uh, Bernal with his strength midfield promise and stuff like that as well. So that's pretty decent. So with the signing of Bell, we actually do have a full 11 of players like that's a team that I think would do pretty well and I think we certainly have improved the team uh, if we look at the bench we could still do with another centre mid coming in of course to help out Sandri uh, hopefully that's going to be coming in in Debbie uh, we could do with another right back and a right winger though as backups now we do have potentially an option I mean Fink's leaving the club isn't he we could ignore him Jacobson was meant to go out on loan. No one wants to get him on loan, or no one wants to have him on loan, I should say. He plays on the left wing, but can play striker, which could open up Roxvarg being the backup right winger, which actually might be the better option. 
to have Roxfarg as the backup right winger. But Jacobs not a great striker either. When it comes to backup right backs, we, we actually do need to bring someone else in. I mean, Bernal can play there, and maybe that might be enough. But we have the money to bring someone in, I think. Now, potentially, I think there's two options here. I think these two guys here are maybe the solution to the issue that we might be having. Uh, Lajosh, I can't say his first name, a Major, basically, we'll call him that, has played at Oostend uh, this past season and done really well, 23 goals in 39 appearances. And actually, his whole goal-scoring record is really, really good. Came from Pushkas Academy, of course, the team used to manage in around the block. Now, he'll be expensive... And I don't think he's actually that keen to join us. He does say he's interested, but he's doubtful because he wants to get into the Champions League with Usten. But I presume they've maybe not got there because he's on the doubtful list. So he might be interested. The issue is it's going to be an expensive deal to get him into the club. What was it suggesting? Uh, 13 to 23 million. Thing is, he would cover the right wing and the striking options. And although his finishing is only 11, right? You look at that 23 goals he scored last season. That, you know, makes me think... He can score goals. So for me, I think he is an option. The other chap we could look to bring in is this guy who has been playing for Antalya Sport in Turkey and scoring plenty of goals as well. Last season, not quite so good, but all the seasons before that, you know, well into double figures for the goals, which is great. And again, can play striker and can play on the wing. Now, we don't know quite as much about him. He's a little older as well, would want more money. But the transfer fee is suggesting to be 8 to 11 million. Wage between 44 and 56,000, though. I think I would prefer to have this guy coming in. And he can play both roles, can't he? He's going to be expensive, whatever happens. If we just put an offer of 10 million on the table, which they will reject... Let's see the damage on this. If we go to suggest terms, 21, 20 down the line. So 40 million pounds, basically. No, not even 40. Uh, 42 million pounds. I mean, we could do like 15 up front, 10 down the line. Because he is good. He is good. And we've got the money, right? Suggest? They're not far off. If we go like to 16... And 11, get rid of that, suggest they're happy. Okay. Cool. That's a really big bid. Just as a backup, though, how much would they want for this guy? If we put 5 million on the table, because this would be a lot less risky if we can get him for a lot cheaper, right? Suggest that 5 million, they come back and say 9 and 8. It's a lot, isn't it? How about 6 and 6? You know, I can, we can do 12... Mm, Six and four. I don't think they'll like it. No. Ooh, they're, they're not too far off. They want... Oh, basically, if we can go six and five for 11 million, they want two there. How about 5.5? In fact, six and six. Six and six. Get rid of that. Suggest they do that for 12. Let's just see what the contracts look like for both these guys. Cool. The contract for Major is looking at sixty-four to ninety-two thousand pounds a week. Whereas the, I mean, the contract for the other guy is still expensive, fifty-six to seventy-six. Um, get rid of that regular starter. He won't like it. He does like it. Okay. He wants eighty-five grand a week, though. And that's getting to silly territory, like. 45? I don't think he's going to say yes to that. We'll just keep everything else as it is. This is going to be... If we wanted him, I don't think we're going to get him for a reasonable price. No. It's not happening with him. It's not happening. We're not going to get him on a, on a contract that we can actually afford. And it's a big risk. Uh, with this guy... Regular starter. Once he's locked in big pay rise. That's a bit frustrating. 81 grand a week. Right. Again... I'm walking away, I'm not doing it. So that was a waste of 10 minutes or so, wasn't it? But if we do bring a striker in, it would be quite good. It would be quite good because then it would mean Roxfar could play on the wing instead. He could be the backup on the wing instead. And that would be better for us. Uh, Johnny Fowler is a regen here. He's got seven finishing. No, <laughs> no thank you. Gabriel Salom, playing for Racing Club. 20-year-old Argentine, got some good youth caps. Uh, strength is poor. 
but has got decent enough finishing. Uh, good dribbling. Good. He actually looks pretty fundamentally good as a striker. Physical's got better. Maybe this is the guy then. Maybe we look to bring this guy in. Let's ask his agent about availability first and foremost. Uh, 4.8 to 6. That seems reasonable. If we can just put like 2.5 down on the table to start off with and suggest. And they want 5 and 4. Let's bring that down to... There's two, there's four for six million pounds total, which they want. We'll make it seven million pounds then, like that. Suggest, finalised, good to me. And then bringing that striker in would probably allow us to keep hold of Jacobson rather than put him on loan. Not Jacobson, um, Roxfarg, sorry. Although, no, Jacobson's meant to go on loan, isn't he? So who am I thinking of? Oh, Roxfarg, who's meant to be a backup striker this season. He would go into the right wing backup spot, wouldn't he? which is probably more suited to him as a player. And then we have a striker. And so for a backup right back, do we need to look for someone a little bit more established like Vinicius Tobias, who actually does look quite decent, could play anyone on the right-hand side as well. So could cover at right wing too, should we need him to, to cover there. The issue with him is it says decent championship. We don't want championship. But if we get on a cheap deal on a short-term contract, it wouldn't be that bad. And actually, he looks better than Dylan in some areas and Dylan's a pr maybe he's not a championship player maybe that scout report's a bit dodgy I'm going to make an offer um, agent what's the agent saying okay it's 703 million so not too much at all uh, let's make the offer of let's just put a million pounds on the table for him suggest terms they want three and three that's a bit much isn't it how about how about two, two and a half and two, four and a half million pounds? They say yes, it's a bit much maybe, but I think it's worth it. And so these contracts are being accepted. And so these contracts are going to be negotiated now. So luckily, uh, Salon wants to be a squad player to start things off, which is perfect for us because that's exactly what he's going to be, regular starter, important player. That seems fair enough to me. Contract is actually really nice compared to other players. If we can get rid of, you know, future ways for him to make money, um, that would be even better if we just pump it up to 18 grand a week instead. Suggest he wants a bit more, 20, how about 20 and yeah, that seems good to me. Okay, contract done. The contract for Tobias is going to be expensive, um, but he wants to be a regular starter and have the club as a stepping stone. I'm going to remove and exclude that, which he's happy with. He's putting in release fee clauses. I'll keep the relegation one in there, but the one to Champions League I'll get rid of. Not a 42 grand a week though. Like 28. Pfft, appearance fee is quite big, isn't it, as well? That's annoying. Luckily, he's going to be back up. I think we'll leave Paul Dillon playing. Uh, and this guy will be back up. So he won't actually get that appearance fee all that often. And maybe not on the bench either because the unused substitute fee is going to get removed. Uh, suggest he's not happy. 30. And again, the appearance fee might have to stay high. And he just won't play that often, maybe. It's a deal, at least. Oh, look at this. England are once again coming to ask for me to be their manager. Again, I'm going to reject it because... I mean, if it was Wales, that would be great. But guess what? France want me to. I don't want to go to France. Give me Wales, and I'd, I'd do it. In the meantime, though, Tobias will be given a work permit. We'll accept it and bring him into the team, I think. Okay, so another player leaving the club, this time Bradley Fink. He's on his way out to join Fulham of all clubs. He's rejected QPR and Sunderland, so he's off to Fulham for 2.9 million. He was never quite the player I think we wanted or needed him to be, so he's on his way, which is fair enough, I think. A few more scout reports of a few players coming. But, well, not coming in, obviously, but I'm starting to think now, right, as uh, Bruce Munch and Gladbach are making a £6.5 million pound bid for Lucas Holter, who's valued at 18 to 24 million pounds. Uh, no, reject that straight away. Uh, I'm starting to think now, obviously because we are looking to force a move. Now, mm, lots of players are cross with me. We know that. Holter's one of them, apparently. But we'll get him to be fine soon. Anyway, what I was trying to say was that we've got the two players coming in, hopefully. After that, we've got a fair bit of money left, I think. Do we just try and sign a ton of like 18 year old players with five star potential? And there is a bid for Alec, who it's way less than his value, but it's actually slightly more than we paid for him. So I'll accept it because I want him gone, basically. He's just a bit of a. 
Eight and nine, isn't he? Okay, and here we go. I'm on 24th. Uh, Debbie, his work permit's been agreed. It's 12 million pounds. It's a big pig signing, but it's a signing that I think we need. And I think he's going to be a good player for us. And I think his value will come in to be at least 20 million pounds when he joins the club. Young, uh, got a good range of attributes on that we like in a player for the role that we're looking at. And as you can see, three and a half stars of current ability, four and a half stars of potential, almost 20 million pounds in value. He's come in with under 21 caps for France as well. Surely at this stage, he'll be great to you know fit into a France national team after a bit of improvement. But I like what I see. I think, I mean, aside from the tackling and the marking, you ignore that. He looks like a really good player to me. Also, I'm aware it's probably not pronounced Debbie either, but I quite like the idea of this guy being called Debbie. You know, like De Debbie from down the shops or something like that. Ah, and brilliantly, Salon the striker is also set to sign for us as well. And that will help us out massively too. And with that, as I write this down on my post-it notes, is, well, all that we need to sign. We've got a goalkeeper, we've got a left centre-back, we've got a left winger, we've got a CDM and three centre-mids, a right-back and a right-winger slash striker. The four players that want to go out on loan are all out on loan, apart from Jacobson, who's now going to stay at the club. In terms of players that I wanted to sell, there was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine on there. And with Alec and Alton about to leave the club, that'll be all nine of them sold as well. Plus, Adam Thomas Paris, I suppose, isn't it? He was one that's meant to be on loan, but has been sold instead. This, for me, I mean, what a fantastic transfer window. Like, we've actually got in everyone that we want to get in. I mean, we spent 43 million there. At the end of last season, if you include the 10 million pounds, call it for that. So that's 53 million that we've spent. But we've also brought in uh, a lot of money as well. £39 million pounds we've brought in, which is very, very good. Oh, no, I'm also missing off the David Sakira transfer as well. So that's not 53. It's, uh, I think, mean, basically call it 65 million. And yet we still have £31 million pounds of budget to spend. We are actually quite over our wage budget, though. So we should probably adjust the budgets a little bit, shouldn't we? Uh, although some players are about to leave, aren't they? Let's see what the budgets look like after that. Although it's not going to be much of a difference, is it? Let's just adjust the budgets so we have about six... I mean, let's call it 700 million to spend. I mean, 700 million. 700,000 pounds to spend on... You can tell I'm tired. 700,000 pounds to spend on wages. That gives us 25 million to spend still. We could do some stuff with that. One player that has been on my books for a little while is this uh, Zoran guy. He's a left-back currently playing in Croatia. Looks fairly cheap. Uh, and again, like... I reckon might be worth it, potentially. And then get him chewed under our current left backs. Championship current ability, Premier League potential. It could also maybe, because he's got better tackling and marking than uh, our current left back, Rocco. Long term injury? What's his long term injury? Injuries. Uh, five weeks. It's not really a long term injury. Oh, no, he's currently out for five weeks. Um, or is that mean time out total five weeks? Either way, it's a hip injury, which is probably quite bad, to be fair. Oh, it says up here literally three months. So, okay, it is a long-term injury. But again, I quite like the look of this young Croatian player. In fact, I'll tell you what, I'd, I'd be happy to take a punt on this guy 18 years old for that sort of price point, right? If we can look at agent availability, he says, yeah, the same sort of price range. Okay, transfer, make an offer of half a million. Let's start the bidding at that. They want 1.2. How about 800? How about 800K? They want 1.2. Uh, how about 1 million? Yeah, they agree. Good. But these contracts are coming through, which we can afford. There are quite cheap deals and they'll be good players for the future. So regular starter, important player. Let's get rid of the important player. and Squad player? He wants... How about squad and then regular? He's happy with that. Okay. 18 grand a week. That's a lot of money. How about 15 instead? But oh, I have to get rid of that. Okay, put that up again a little bit. Locked in release fee clauses, get rid of that yearly wage rise, maybe leave everything else as it is. And he wants more money. It's so frustrating, this money situation now in terms of wages. It's so annoying. We have to give them so much. But it's it's the world we live in right now. It's the world we live in. If we can just get these bonuses down a little bit, that's all right. Deal. But with that transfer, uh, just waiting on a work permit, um, it's getting quite close to... But with that transfer waiting on a work permit, I think there's going to be no more transfer business done this transfer window. Obviously, uh, Jacobson leaving the club uh, on loan, fingers crossed. Corey Alton should be leaving the club soon as well. Uh, a few young players heading out on loan also. But 
like we I've crossed everything off and filled in all the gaps on this post-it note. I, I, I actually feel this transfer window has been absolutely fantastic. I think we've done such a good job. The reason I'm going to wrap things up right now before these players actually leave the club and join the club right now is because I've got to sort out squad numbers and I actually take a lot of time to do squad numbers and um, I can't be asked to do that and then carry on recording afterwards if I'm honest with you. But no more business is going to get done because I'm, I'm just not feeling the business. I think we've done what we need to do. We'll save the money for January. So it's been long. It's been a very long one, this. Uh, this potentially could be well over an hour, this transfer special, the first one to be over an hour, but there's just so much stuff to pack in because we've done so many transfers. But it's been well worth it. Uh, tomorrow, we will be back for the Wolves game, potentially even Aston Villa as well. Um, probably both games, I would imagine, but we'll see how it pans out essentially we are going to be missing some players for that though so that might be quite interesting to see how we handle the start of the season missing players on international duty but you know we'll make the most of it i'm sure so thank you so much for watching this transfer special i know it's a long one it's been a long one for me to record and probably edit in a minute as well which is not going to be so much fun but still thank you so much i hope you guys have enjoyed it make sure you do drop a like on the video for me subscribe to the channel if you're new around here and leave a comment down below for the youtube algorithm until next time have a lovely evening see you soon Goodbye.